Hello you guys, welcome back to the channel. And for those of you that notice, this is coming out on a Saturday, not the usual full coming on the Friday. I just wasn't gonna get it made in time, but I'd already got the reptile Saturday video done, so I'll swap them around. Um, yeah, and I've kind of fibbed to you, haven't I? So the last set of these two Harris Orcs verses, um, I did say that'll do for those. Let's get on the video and make videos about something else, falconry wise, have a break. I kind of realized I've got to do this one. Harris's Hawks versus Golden Eagle. It makes the set complete, the three, but I'm not gonna repeat in this video all the same things um, and then like catch up with the Golden Eagle. So watch the other two videos. Um, if you're interested in a little bit of how I do things and, and what I'm basing this versus on. And again, um, if you clicked on it, a bit of clickbait, we're not competing these birds. It's about really my opinions and my findings on some of the difference working with them. So we've done Harris Hawks and Red Tail Hawks, Harris Hawks versus Goss Hawks. And now the way things are, we've got to go Harris Hawks versus Golden Eagles. And that will wrap up this set. I think as well, I obviously put stuff on social media, um, Instagram and stuff like that, all to keep traffic looking at our businesses, which need a lot of help at this time of year, or rather not this time of year, at this time of climate, because falconry centres and such like, even zoos, they're all a luxury, aren't they? If you're hard up, you don't need to buy an experience day or go to a zoo. So when I put stuff on, um, and we've got, Zoo sitting on his perch or on his running line. I don't know what he's doing here, but I've been mowing the lawn. And he's kind of here. And I might give him a little pet or a little pat. <laughs> he doesn't like that. <laughs> and so on and so forth. Let's see what he does. Go on then, shoo. It's like a vulture. A vulture that people don't fly in an arena, that kind of vulture. Really? He actually does look chasing you. We're coming. <laughs> oh my goodness, the golden eagle. Zeus, up on that. So, here we are, and I might touch him, and I might play with his feet. Um, he's not in the mood for that today, obviously. And, yeah, it can give you the wrong idea, can't it? It can make you think, well, you know, I see Harris Hawks, they're, they're tame. People keep Harris Hawks as pets, they actually do. Um, so when you see a golden eagle that's so well chilled out and such a nice boy that you can touch him and, you know, there's no aggression whatsoever at all. Um, yeah, it can certainly give the wrong idea to some Muppet-like people because it doesn't matter that it gives the wrong idea to, let's say, the general public. Like, oh, wow, there's a golden eagle and this guy was stroking it and, you know, it didn't attack him. That doesn't matter, does it, to Joe Public? Because Joe Public they're not gonna go and get a golden eagle. But when you've got sort of the dabblers with Harris Hawks and they've got a Harris Hawk, especially if it's a second hand one that happens to be really nice, someone's done a fair job with it, and they think it's a nice pet. Um, and I'm sorry, but people buy Harris Hawks as pets nowadays, just like they buy bearded dragons as pets. Um, golden Eagles, they've suffered the same fate in so much as they've bred really well in the last sort of decade in captivity. They've become available abroad. Uh, in Europe cheap and they've become now available very cheap in Britain because if you know you're a UK breeder and you've got to sell them you can only sell them at the market value uh, there's nothing worse than seeing comments on Facebook and other social media where people say huh, it's the breeders fault they should increase their prices yeah that's not how market forces work I'm afraid I don't breed birds so it's none of my business but at the end of the day something's worth what it's worth if other people are selling them for 50 quid. Yours is not going to be worth 500 quid. It's just not, and that's the way it goes. Um, the only way breeders can can do it is if they've got something where not many other people be, breed them. But if you're breeding top quality Harris Hawks and you think they're worth 600 quid each, but everyone else is breeding them and selling them for 100 pounds, you're still going to struggle to sell them unless you're really well known uh, and then birds are well known. So Golden Eagles, they got down to about two grand at one point. I don't know what they are now it puts it in the range of anyone now the reason i say that is it seems to be a thing in falconry um if a bird gets to under two grand i don't know why whether and this is going to sound sexist it's not meant to sound sexist but stereotyping i think a bloke can justify spending two grand on his hobby to his missus i know that sounds stupid but it is a bit like that in so much as 
it's an affordable amount, even if it's a lot of money and, and kind of things are tough. So these guys here have definitely been bought by people that literally think they're a big Harris Hawk. So I want to tell you some of the differences between flying and keeping golden eagles and Harris Hawks, because in some ways this bird is like a big Harris Hawk. In fact, I think, I think most people's female Harris Hawks probably not as good as this guy when it comes to behaving himself and you know, he didn't particularly want me to stroke him, did he ran away? But he's not he's not being silly. He's got incredibly sharp talons. They are absolutely razor sharp. That's got him a quick ow. But you can see this guy is well bonded with me. Um oh, got fed up with that. Jeez. Oh, I just got a face full of dry grass. You can see he was behaving with me probably like he was with another golden eagle. No, no need to foot me or grab me. We'll let him chill out. But I'm gonna go over a few of these differences and why. Yeah, don't get a golden eagle just because you float a Harris up. No way, it's not a bigger version, not at all. So we'll leave him down there to chill out for a second. It's been an incredibly long day and that makes my legs ache squatting down there. So we're gonna go and sit and just chill out for a minute. Um, and we'll go over a few of these points, the differences. So again, look at the other two videos in this set, but also look at my golden eagles, how I train Zeus, those videos, because or else I'm just going to go over so much stuff the same, and this video is going to get exorbitantly long, uh, which I was trying them to be real 10 minute videos. In fact, the first one's meant to be five minutes, you know me. So look at these videos that have been on the screen, and I'll tell you some more things. Okay, it has been a very long day. Uh, the sun is getting low in the sky. Just been mowing the centre way after hours. So, so first off, this isn't really going to be versus which bird shall I get as my first bird, a goshawk, a red tail, a harris hawk. Um, yes, there are people that have flown golden eagles uh, as their first bird. They've all right, ran into big problems, but some of them have persevered and become eagle falconers, if you like. Don't get a golden eagle because you've got another bird and you think it's something that'll be a really good posy thing. That's just not worth it, is it? Just don't get a nice car or something, I don't know. It's not for that, it's not for the poser. Think about why you want one. So some of the differences are, you are going to need way more kit. Because if you brought all your kit for your Harris Hawk, and then 10 years later you want to try a Goss Hawk or Red Tail, the sort of kit you got, the Muse, the travel boxes, the purchase, the glove, they all kind of fit. A Golden Eagle, you've got to start again, haven't you? You've got to build bigger Muse. You've got to look at different perching, bigger perching if nothing else. Um, you've got to look at... Probably a thicker glove. I, I don't. I, I use uh, all I want is a glove that goes at least up to my elbow because their foot their foot span is wide. I use thin gloves. Um, certainly no thicker than I use for a Harris Hawk or an owl. <laughs> um, you need a bigger hood. Hoods. You're going to need a much bigger travel box. You're going to need the room to for that travel box to fit in your car. Everything is bigger. Yes, your telemetry is the same and so on, but you've got to shut out all new kit. Everything's bigger. You're going to do things a different way, maybe. Um, look at the other videos, how I train red tails and gossel, uh, sorry, red tails and harris hawks. Pretty much how I train a golden eagle. Golden eagles will work for a chick leg on a rope line, but that's all for those other videos. Watch those other videos. The differences aren't with the training as such. The difference with the training is when you use a carcass. Golden eagles soon work out that a lure is a toy and it's about exercise. Carcasses are slightly different. Um, and then when you step up to real game, they're very different. A golden eagle takes five years minimum to mature and it will go through various various hormonal changes. It will also start like any young bird, not knowing what the heck it's meant to be doing and what your job is uh, with it. So it's programmed to be far more aggressive than those other birds far more aggressive it's an apex predator your harris hawk and your red tail and your goshawk are not apex predators there are still things that can take them out eagles for example they know when to back down and get away to a degree a golden eagle on the kill doesn't cross that line until it's in serious jeopardy so a coyote charging the pack of harris hawks the hawk's going to leave the kill and fly away a fox charging a golden eagle on the kill, when that eagle puts his hackles up, wings out, it's gonna to skid to a halt. That eagle is designed to keep its kill and exude aggression. And that young eagle, not when they're older if you train them right, but that young eagle, 
you're training it and the aggression it will show towards you, even on a lure, but certainly on a carcass and especially on a kill, will be like nothing you've ever seen. If you think a red tail could be footy on a kill and it hurts, a golden eagle scares people. It scares people. I've seen so many people, especially, I just face plant, people that get an imprint golden eagle chick and they've got this lovely cuddly wuddly chick. Why you want an imprint golden eagle? I will never know unless it's what you want and you're experienced. If you've if you've never trained an imprint, why would you then go from your whichever bird, average size bird, to suddenly getting an imprinted golden eagle? It is not the way forward. That's the way for the people that understand the imprint and to a degree understand eagles first. Imprint or not, the aggression that bird will exude will terrify many people. I've seen it. People that will I'll give it some time on the kill. That's not how to go about it. When you're doing that dummy lure work, that that carcass work, give it a battle. You give it a battle on the lure. You try it out. You make it realise it's a big a big kill isn't going to just roll over and play dead. It's going to take some work. Let it direct its attention to what it's killed, and you rushing and help it. Yeah, you might get footed. Yes, there's aggression. You have to know when to stand your ground. That aggression scares men. And this is a real man thing. Men are s Men are useless when it comes to pain threshold. Most men are embarrassingly useless. And often the big hard men that I know are absolute sissies when it comes to a little bit of an injury. Unfortunately, when they get hurt, they want to lash out at whatever hurt them. You've seen, you've seen men hit themselves with a hammer, throw the hammer across the room because they want to kill the hammer. If you retaliate to your eagles, I don't care what anybody says. It will never forget you hitting it, hurting it back. You will break down the bond of trust. And that is all you have as a falconer, a bond of trust. Some people say they understand being reprimanded and whacked back. None of those people have an eagle like mine. None of them. I've got a bald eagle. They're nothing like golden eagles. Horrible cantankerous things. It's still by far the nicest one I've ever seen anywhere. They don't understand being hit back. They do in a fight, but they don't understand being hit by their mate, their partner. They don't understand it. It makes them distrust you. Aggression and aggression around food is all part of eagles. Certainly, even Zeus had some terrible moments, certainly while he was growing up. Once they understand you and your purpose, and your purpose is to help them on a kill, your purpose is to feed them, your purpose is never to take food. The eagle falconer in the UK that's caught more game than most of the others put together, he still does the old-fashioned way of waving a hare leg or a rabbit leg, letting the bird recall for a bite, and snatching it away and putting it in his bag. Don't do that. This guy is a spectacular eagle falconer. You're not. My way with all my birds is I don't take food from my birds. An eagle, an imprint bald eagle that I feed its meal on the fist, it's still better than anyone else's. Because although I feed that imprint bald eagle on the glove, big, open, massive meals, I never take food away from it. They're not stupid. They see it. They're very, very possessive over food. Your Harris's hawk, massively forgiving. A female Harris hawk, once it matures, if you fly it on your own, and it's just wedded to you, that bird will chase people away in the field. It can be a liability. A golden eagle, you've got to get through that aggression yourself. And that is the biggest thing that will let you down and make you come unstuck really, really fast flying a golden eagle being scared of the aggression, not understanding the aggression. That's how to work with them. Understand the aggression. Why is it doing this? Ignore it. Block it with your glove. Push the bird away on the law. Don't back off. Hanging around in the wings just makes it think you're a thief, a fox coming to get its food. Get in there and help it. Scared back, backing off, then it's having its desired effect. You'll make it more aggressive. I've got so many snakes that people give me because they're aggressive when they open the vivarium. They're not with me because it doesn't work. I'm not scared of them. They're coming out anyway. It's the same mindset. If the eagle charges you and you step back, you're rewarded. You're telling it, I'm terrified of you. Yeah, and it'll keep doing it. 
You've got to understand to hold your ground and be calm without being aggressive back. This, this part of the video has gone on a long time, but the golden eagle aggression will shock you, terrify you, make you sell that eagle if you've done no research at all. It's not a big Harris hawk. Aggression and ability to hurt you like no Harris hawk has ever possessed. Hooding, your Harris hawk can be hooded. Why you wouldn't hood a Harris hawk, I don't know. People say, oh, you don't need to hood a Harris hawk. So your attitude is, you don't need to hood a Harris hawk and they're awkward to hood. If you can't hood your first bird, because you're not going to get a golden eagle as your first bird, if you can't hood your red tail, your goshawk, or your harris hawk, you're not ready for a golden eagle. You're not. Because if you don't hood that eagle and you don't know how to hood it, they're much easier to hood, by the way, than harris hawks. If you don't hood it, you don't understand why, you're going to come unstuck. A golden eagle in the wind will put its wings out all the time. It will get massively frustrated on the glove, massively frustrated on the glove because you're not letting it fly and it will tire you and it out up in the wind like an upturned umbrella for the most part hooding stops all of that you might want to change the kit you might want to do something when it's younger hooding enables you to do so much stuff with those birds going out how on earth would you go out in the uk hawking hairs with your eagle if you can't hood it because you can't have it unhooded on the glove all the time it's going to be looking at hairs two fields away and baiting. You 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 want it to go and hunt stuff, and then you're not letting it. it. Might be okay for the Americans working with rehab birds, where they're working in a country where their birds can be off. You can trust the bird like you would a goshawk in the UK. Let the bird fly. It's always going to see game before you. You can't do that in the UK. You can't let that eagle fly unless you know it's safe to do so. And that means whether there's no footpaths on your land at all, keep an eye out for things like dogs. Because can you be 100% sure that your golden eagle won't view a little dog as potential game? You can't be 100% sure, but you can be a Harris Hawk, because if it grabs a dog, it's going to get put, put off, it's going to make someone upset. It's not going to do that. Liability with an eagle is much greater. You as a falconer need to understand the countryside, field craft, birds of prey, falconry, to a way higher level than you did with your first Harris Hawk, that's that's for sure, because the potential to cause harm is there. It's not really with your Harris Hawk, not even not even five percent. So another big difference: potential to cause harm. You need to understand working with eagles, how to work with them safely, and be a far more responsible falconer. What are you going to hunt with your golden eagle? Because your Harris Hawk, your Harris Hawk, bit more on the menu, a little bit more on the menu in so much as even the field that you're hunting in can be less ideal. You can hunt on open plains, slopes, or you can hunt in woodland, scrub country, forgotten places. Your eagle needs so much game because generally you're going to be hunting hares and hares need big open spaces and you need loads of them in loads of land. It's no good having 10,000 hares in five acres. You're going to spook a lot of them. Most top eagle falconers that are successful in the UK spend thousands of pounds a year driving around the UK to invites and meetings with their eagle to provide their eagle with enough game. You don't need to do that with a Harris hawk. You really don't. Or a red tail or a goss hawk especially. You can find game to a degree much easier than you can to provide a year's support, a season sport with your eagle. So big problem there is you need a lot of land with lots of game, whatever you're going to hunt with it. Are you going to hunt foxes and deer because you want to be a big, great hunter, great white hunter? Or are you going to go for exciting, amazing slips? What are you getting an eagle for? You need to think about that for sure. What are you going to hunt and why? And have you realistically got that available all year round or all season through? So back to the quickly back to that five year plan. Your Harris Hawk, you can make a good bird in the first season and it will only get better. Keep your Harris Hawk. Season in, season out, your Goss Hawk or your Red Tail. They all get better and better, but you can have a good season in your first season. Golden Eagles, before you get a bird that turns out like Zeus when he's 10 years old, you've got to give yourself a five year project. You really have. They mature at five or six years old in the wild. It goes through hormonal changes, 
it learns slower in a way because it's it's got a, it can go without food longer and it's got a long lifespan it doesn't need to rush things look at it as a long-term project don't get an eagle for a year's falconry you're gonna it's just gonna be rubbish and why it's going to be rubbish is the amount of work you've got to put in to get that bird fit. If you're going to use a thermal imager to spot a hair and kick them up under your feet, maybe you're going to get a few, get more game with an unfit eagle. But if you want to see a golden eagle for the point of flying a golden eagle, you need to be flying game. Good slips with a very fit eagle and they take way longer than the smaller birds versus the Harris Hawk to get fit. They really do. You've got to look at some kind of fitness program because most of us will not get those birds fit flying at game. You're just not, you're carrying it hooded. If you were to go out with your eagle and get six really good slips at hair a day, you are doing really well every time you go out. That's not going to get it fit because you're not going to be going out seven days a week. You need to be looking at some kind of lure work once it understands what real game is. Don't get it lure bound. It knows the difference. It knows the easy option. It'll pull off hairs. If it thinks you'll get a lure at the end of the day. Rope work, for me, has been key. Look at those other videos. How much time have you got to get that bird fit? It takes a lot, lot more effort. Because you can do jump ups with your Harris Hawk in the evening in your garage, on your patio. To do any fitness with the eagle, you need space. My eagle's way too clever to do jump ups. It wants to fly away and then jump up. It won't jump up vertically. It knows it's really hard work for those big wings. So you still need space for it to fly out. It doesn't really work. Rope work works well. Have you got the time to get those birds properly fit? And have you got the dedication? Because everything about eagle falconry is harder than any other form of falconry. Harder. Not more cleverer or more complicated or more difficult. It's harder. You're carrying a massive weight on your arm so you've got to carry it around you've got to do a lot of walking to find game it's just physically more grueling on your body your harris hawk soon learns what a ferret is so does your goshawk and your red tail it learns the benefit of not killing the ferret because it produces more game your eagle's got a brain just the same it can work it out people fly golden eagles in america with sausage dogs <laughs> excuse the phrase you know the ones i mean sausage dogs <laughs> little tiny things like that and they understand that little sausage dog, <laughs> that's the breeder's going to hate me for that. They understand it's going to help them. My wife has Bedlington Terriers. I've worked them with goshawks for years. No way was I going to work them with the eagle because they change when they're wet. Their big fluffy coat goes all bedraggled. They look skinny little rat dogs when they're soaked through. Eagle hits one of them, it's going to be killed. I brought a pointer, bigger dog. She's been tackled three times by the eagle. She's been knocked over when it, when when the dogs put up Munch Jack and the and the dogs not stopped on the whistle. The eagles give chase, and when it's caught with the dog, it's literally just pushed it out, cartwheeled it across the fields, and carried on the pursuit. But it's grabbed the dog three times. Misidentification. If you've got a little dog, think about that. It's probably not going to survive it. My dog's bonehead didn't they just carried on hunting straight after. It can be worked with dogs, but think about what dog you've got because that young eagle is going to make mistakes or it potentially could make mistakes when your dog's working cover. But of course, eagles work with dogs like any other birds, exactly the same. And they've just got the potential to cause your dog harm if they clobber it on purpose. Now, the feathers of a Harris Hawk, they're legendary, aren't they? They're one of the things that actually made them um, sort of a bird for the masses. It wasn't just their breeding and their brain power and their social nature. People have been flying goshawks for centuries, centuries, uh, having to deal and understand the feathers, the tail and all that kind of thing. Harris Hawks stopped all that. You can't break their feathers, can you? I think mine's got, actually got a broken feather, but you know, they've got these pliable, amazing, supple feathers that transform your housing of the bird and your handling of the bird because you can do it all a bit not quite right and get away with it. Golden eagles are like that. If your golden eagle's got tip wings, you see people's eagles with tip primaries, occasionally they'll break them when they pirouette on the ground, they'll drag, their, they'll drag one of their wings when they're on their side, turning sharply their hair. But to be honest, like all falconry, if a bird's got broken feathers, 
It's due to handling and husbandry 99.9% .9 of the time. It might break on a kill, but you've already damaged it or weakened it in your husbandry. Eagles tip their feathers. My, my Wurzel, the bald eagle's got some feather tips. It's all down to housing, all down to housing. And you've got to correct that because they don't molt all their feathers every year. So like everything, prevention is better than cure. But for sure, golden eagle feathers, they're as tough as Harris Hawk feathers for sure. So I've had mates say to me, yeah, but you were just lucky with the breeding of that Gosshawk Dave, or that Golden Eagle, or that Bald Eagle, or that Harris Hawk. Just lucky, they're so calm and well behaved, and they're just such brilliant birds. Yeah, it's not luck, I'm not being big headed, it's not luck. It's called dedication. My hunting birds, I've put so much time and effort into them, so much time and effort. My display birds, very different. They get their training, manning, everything, at their flying slot every day when they're being exercised. But my hunting birds, that's what I'm mad, mad about is true falconry. I couldn't train this guy now. I don't have the time. And I'm honest, really love to fly another gospel this year. I don't have the time. Nowhere near. But this guy, the first five years, I kept a diary. It's in a book. I'd love to get the book sorted out because it's got so many photos. The dedication. And I, I so, it was such slow falconry. I caught, well, actually, he averages, he averages, even now, about six head of game a season. But I get to see some amazing, spectacular flights. For me, a golden eagle took me a lot of research. Well, none of my mates knew I was going to get a golden eagle. I did loads of research. I went out with eagle men. Go out with eagle men and women and learn. But this guy here, he's the result. He's the exact result of the plan that was in here before I bought a golden eagle. This is exactly what I wanted. A hunting partner... A golden eagle that was totally puppy dog tame, but a brilliant bird to fly. And that's what he is. You start out as you mean to go on. You form a plan. Now the plan doesn't always go how you want it to go, but you form a plan of your end game. So to sum up, way more expensive to sort out in the beginning. All your kit's bigger and you need to replace it all. They can become incredibly well-manned bonded birds but you will have so much aggression to get through to start off with whatever your eagle's like it's going to have tantrums of aggression that back talon i don't know it's getting off for two inches long maybe goes through the palm of your hand it really hurts and it does hurt more than a smaller hawk would but it can be done more money. They can be well-manned, beautiful, bonded partners. You need so much more land and so much more game. Both of those things. It's no good having lots of game and not lots of land. You need that. Long-term project. Not a one-season bird. I'm going to try this hawk this season. Got to take one of these on for five or six years minimum. And lastly, the difference more than anything is your responsibility when you're flying an eagle. Because if you effort with an eagle, and it does take someone's little dog, every eagle falker in the UK is gonna be knocking on your door to punch you in the face. It's that serious. It's a privilege. It isn't your right, really, to fly a golden eagle, or any bird. It's a privilege, and you need to understand that, and all the cost and worry that comes with it. And I'll, I'll give you, I think that's, that can be my last word. Fly the Harris Hawk, well, the most unworrying bird to fly there's ever been. Flying a golden eagle, you worry every time it leaves your glove of potential for all sorts of things. It's not stressful like an excited over baity goshawk, but it's stressful because of the responsibility on your shoulders. Hope you've enjoyed, enjoyed the video. <laughs> Next time, not Harris Hawk versus anything. See you soon.